In part two, we will be talking about how to get started with Geno Pets and how the minting process goes, including a personality quiz that everyone must take, which decides what their Geno Pet will look like. We'll talk about the free versus the paid versions of the game. Should you or should you not have multiple Geno Pets? And can you breed Geno Pets? Let's go ahead and dive right into part two of this series. So let's get let's get a little bit into the gameplay. All right. So uh, when you when you first download the app and you know you need an invitation code, of course. Um, so once you put in the invitation go code, you go through uh, a questionnaire uh, process, which helps you generate your Geno Pet. Now, can you go into this a little bit on the thought process behind this? And is there an, any extra advantages depending on how you answer? Do you get any extra bonuses if you answer a certain way versus another? Or is it, it's more just for um, the, 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 how it generates the Geno Pet and like what it looks like? Yeah, that, that last one is a very gamer uh, centric question. Yeah. <laughs> how do I how do I max out? We're, we're, we're always looking for for edges, you know, for for a small <laughs> exactly. advantage. Um, unfortunately, no, there aren't any advantages. I'll just put that up front. But I do think it's a really cool way of um, getting introduced to the game. So, uh, you know, anyone can mint or create summon a baby Geno pet for free in our game. It starts at level one, and the way the Geno pet is basically created for you is that it is procedurally assembled at the time of the mint. So when you are answer when you finished answering those questions, that's when we assemble your baby pet for you um, at random from a what from like a dizzying array of possible parts. Now for the level one pets, because they're small and they don't have some of the uh, body parts yet, the, the combinations are a, a little bit fewer. But basically, we don't even know what your pet is going to look like until you mint it. The questions, though, that you're that you're asked are based on a very popular uh, personality quiz. Mm. And the reason that we decided to incorporate that as the first step was, look, it's not just an item. It's not just an NFT that you buy to get into the game. It's really meant to be your digital avatar and your spirit animal and your personal companion in the game. And so we wanted the player to begin identifying with their pet immediately and to feel a bond with it. And you know, what better time to do that than, than to start right at its creation. And then your answers do inform the algorithm on the back end, but it's not for any substantial advantages. They're more for subtle sort of aesthetic influences, such as the color of the light lines and things like that. Um, all of which will eventually be customizable by the player anyway. But we just thought it was a really fun way to introduce the idea of summoning your pet and really taking ownership of it because it is a reflection of you. This is yours, you're helping to create it, and now it's on you to take care of it. So I think one of the key words that people need to know is that you don't have to pay to play this game. You can come into this game and start playing completely for free. Now, there is a way, there is, I guess, I don't know if you, you want to call it a paid version of this game, but there there is a, a way to where you buy a Genesis Geno pet that's already leveled up a lot higher um, and evolved. Um, now, so my the question is, my question is, what are what are the key differences if if I'm starting out and I have you know th these two options? What what are the the main differences um, on this decision on whether I want to go the free route or if I want to go you know, buying one off the market? You know, I, I think it, it might be a little bit hard to visualize as a whole right now because we're just we're just at the beginning of starting to release game. Um, but if, you know, people could zoom out just a, a little bit, I think they'd see that we don't intend the free versus paid thing to be so binary. The underlying framework for the game is based on traditional free-to-play models. So. Think of very popular games like Valorant or Fortnite, or if you want to go back old school a little bit, something like Maple Story, which was a free to play MMO RPG, very cute. Anyone could get started with a free character. And in our game, the core game, the fitness focused pet RPG will always be enjoyable end to end for free in that manner. We, want, we don't want to tie um, you know, some sort of financial requirement to someone who wants to come into our game, summon their baby pet, and go on this journey of trying to pursue a more active lifestyle. That that part's always free. However, like other free-to-play games, um, 
we need to provide some monetization. We need to be able to drive some revenue. And so what we're doing is we're creating a system where we can offer convenience, customization, perks, these things to players who are willing to pay. And so if you think about the traditional free to play experience, it, it's not so you know black and white anymore. You might start off with a free, free character and you might just do nothing but play with that free character 99% of the time. But one day a skin might come along, an outfit might come along, a, an answer, a, a, a quick benefit or, or some sort of interesting um, feature might come along that you are willing to pay a couple of dollars for or more. Um, now, does that make you now a fully paid player? In my eyes, it just makes you a player of this game, some of which the premium features can be accessed by paying and most of the features are enjoyable just for free. So basically it's, if you wanna pay for the convenience of skipping ahead type of thing to, to have more access in the game is basically what, what the paid side is if you decide to do that. If not, you can start for free, right? And you can get to the point where you can level up your Geno Pet and evolve it so that you can, can you, are you able to act to evolve it to the point where you can access all these same uh, features? So in the case of the Genesis pet, mm -hmm. the Genesis Geno pet, it's just a level. Well, it's not just a level advantage, but it's primarily a level advantage. So if you level your way, your free pet up to level 22, there won't be much of a difference between a Genesis pet and a regular pet. The only difference is that you just put in this grind, right? Every, every gamer knows the grind. You, you got to put in the work to get your, your uh, character up to where you want it to be. And basically the Genesis Geno pet, the ability to go onto a marketplace and buy a pet that's a higher level is you shortcutting that. Um, what I think is interesting though, is that Genesis Geno pet, or really in the future, this could apply to any pet, right? If I had a level 22 pet, it wasn't a Genesis pet, but you just, and you were just starting out, you just wanted to get a head start, you could buy it from me. And, and so what we've done here is we've now allowed the players to decide what they want and what is a fair price. And we're trying to allow them to trade with one another and transact with one another. Now, not every feature in the game can be accessed simply by playing or by grinding the earning side or the economy, uh, economic actions that are made possible by uh, having a genesis, uh, by having a geno pet habitat, that part you can't get to just by walking. Um, you'll need to, you know, act, either create a habitat or buy one from the market in order to do that. And the reason we've we've drawn that bright line between, you know, what's accessible just by free play, and what's uh, what what you do need to, you know, buy into, is because the habitat has very strong um, influences. Is, is a very, very powerful asset for the in-game economy. And so we just thought that if you want to play that game, you, you're coming to us with that intention. You're a serious gamer. You're going to play the economy game. Well then, you know, let's let's treat it seriously. So to be clear, you can you can level up your your free, if you, get a, if you start off as a free user, free player, you can level it up. You can use a lot of the features, but you can't, you, you won't be able to earn in the economy if you're on the free side you do need a habitat in order to earn exactly you you'll be as we release these features and they're they're coming very soon uh, but we're building furiously but you'll be able to explore the world with your pet for free you'll be able to battle for free you'll be able to level up your pet for free you'll be able to pretty much enjoy any rpg game element of geno pets for free however if you want to get into the crypto side of things, if you want to start turning your steps into a utility token that allows you to craft item, very powerful items that can then be sold to other players or traded or used for a better outcome in battle, that's when you know you'll have to purchase a habitat. And we think that's only fair because you know it's an extremely powerful asset. Um, and, and it gives you earning potential as well. So my next question is, can you have multiple Geno pets? Oh yeah, you should see how many are, are loaded up in, in some of our team members' wallets right now. Um, but like any, you know, just like World of Warcraft or any other traditional RPG, you can only play with one at, at a time. You can only have one selected as your main pet at a time. If you want to swap that out and, you know, you want to level up your other one for a while, um, 
you certainly can do so. Okay, and are there any benefits to having multiple pets? even if you're only using one? Nothing substantial that I can think of. I mean, I, I do think, and this is a little bit too early to predict with accuracy, but I do think once we introduce more P2P competitive mechanics, for example, like battle, um, I think me uh, the metagame will arise and that may, you know, incentivize players to say, okay, I want a pet that's optimized for this type of play. Like I want a pet that's optimized for battle and I'm gonna load it up with all of the augments that increase the appropriate stats. Whereas maybe this other pet is just aesthetically the one that I love. It's the cutest one, it's got the right colors, but you know, the, what makes it look good is maybe not great for battle. So I'm just gonna have both of them. It's really about player optionality and, and giving you the, the ability to uh, enjoy the experience you want within the game. All right, so my next question is, is there any um, Genopet breeding or any plans from it? And this is actually uh, a question submitted from a, from a member from the community, uh, Crypto Coop. Yeah, I hope I said that right, Crypto Coop. So he just got himself an invitation code for submitting that question. What's, what's the answer on that one? No, uh, no plans for Genopet breeding. Um, look, never say never, right? I can't necessarily uh, predict what will what will make sense in a year or two years time. But as of today and since the beginning of the project, there's never been a plan to incorporate pet breeding. Um, the pets are not really meant to be, you know, bred and multiplied that, in that way. Each pet is really meant to be a, a representation of you and your effort. And so uh, you can have multiple pets, but uh, it, it kind of didn't make sense to include in the framework this idea of taking multiple pets and combining them for new pets and um, having that whole that, that whole structure be um, an integral part of the game. It's, it's not really about breeding. It's about uh, exploration, um, training, nurture, and evolution. I hope you guys enjoyed part two of this interview with Genopets COO, Kevin Kim. If you guys want a free activation code, I have 100 to give away. Drop a comment below referencing your favorite part of this video with your thoughts or comments on it. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, goes without saying. Now you won't wanna miss part three of this series where we talk about how you can earn money playing Genopets. Now yes, if you wanna earn, you will have to invest some type of money or will you? Kevin shares how you can still earn money using their rental system. If you know, you know. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. I'll catch you in part three. Peace and love.